Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. One of my favorite tools within the Steam Deck is called Emu Deck. And this app will basically integrate your entire ROM set into the SteamOS interface. And I've made a bunch of videos about this tool here on this channel. The reason why I like it so much is that it's pretty easy to set up and then once you have it integrated with the rest of your Steam games, it's a pretty fun experience. On top of that, it works really well with another app called Emulation Station. This one will allow you to throw all of your games into one single app so that you can browse and launch them from here as well. So for me, it's kind of the best of both worlds. I can have my favorite games integrated into Steam and then I can have the rest within Emulation Station. Well, today I'm going to show you how to do this exact same setup, but on Windows based machines. And this is going to work on any number of devices that run on Windows. So handheld PCs like the iNeo 2S right here, or you could just set this up on a regular old Windows desktop PC as well. So what we're going to do in this video here is I'm going to show you how to set this up from scratch on any sort of Windows machine. And I'm going to show off some of my favorite emu deck tips and tricks to make sure you get the most out of this whole setup. And finally, I'm going to show off a couple new features that are in the works for Emudeck as a platform. We got a lot of ground to cover, and so without any further delay, let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, first place we want to go is emudeck.com. This is where you're going to find it both for the Steam Deck as well as on Windows. Now, as of making this video, Windows is still in a testing phase, and so because of that, they're having early access available for patrons. And the plan is that once it's ready for public release, it will be freely available like how it is on the Steam Deck. Either way, if you're interested in testing out an early version of Emudeck for Windows, you will have to join their Patreon page. And to do that, there's a link right here on their website. Now to become a patron and have access to Emudeck for Windows, it'll cost you $3.50 a month. And if you wanted, you could just join for that first month, grab that app, and then go. However, just bear in mind that you won't have access to any sort of updates while it's still within early access. So again, it's really going to be up to you whether or not you want to pay to have access to this app early, or if you'd rather wait until it's going to be freely available for everyone. And I should also note that, you know, Emudeck itself is basically just compiling all of your emulators all in one place, but you could also set all of this up yourself. You'd basically have to install each of the emulators individually, and then you'd configure each of those emulator apps apps to work with your ROMs, and then also integrate it into Steam using an app called Steam ROM Manager. So when it comes down to it, if you're willing to pay the 350 to get early access right here, basically all that configuration work will be done for you. Either way, I'm just going to assume from here on out that you are going to join the early access and so you do want to set the rest of this up. To start, once you signed up here, you'll have access to their Patreon page, and they have a pinned post right here on the top. And as you can see, it's titled Early Access Links. Here you're going to find links for both the Windows version, that'll be the executable file right here on the left, but then also there is an Early Access version for the Steam Deck as well. This is their way of rolling out new features before they go out into the public. Anyway, because we're doing Emudeck for Windows, we're going to click on the .exe file and download that here. After it's done, let's go into the Downloads folder and then open it up. When you first open it, Windows is going to say, we don't really like this app, and so it's going to ask, do you really want to open it? From here, click on the button that says more info, and then select, yeah man, I want to do it. At this point, it's going to do the initial installation, which will install some dependencies that are required to make this app run. So just kick back, you might see a couple pop-up windows like this, and then also it may ask for permissions to install Git. Again, just go ahead and tap on yes right here and then let it finish the process. Eventually, you're going to see this window right here. It's going to ask you to restart Emudeck in order to continue. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to close out Emudeck here and then restart that exe file. And you can click on the new desktop shortcut that you have on the left, or you can just open up the setup file again. Regardless, it'll go through the setup option again, and then you'll see this logon page for their Patreon. And here you just have to log in with your Patreon credentials to confirm that you are an early access user. And the process here will be identical to how it is when you log on to their website. After that, it's going to ask you whether or not you want to allow the Emudeck token. You're going to hit yes here. From there, you're going to see a long string of text, which is your token. So you can copy this to your clipboard, and then close out of that window, and then paste that token right here. After you transferred it over, just go ahead and click on the check token button. And from there, you should be good to go. It's going to run through an update and then it'll also show you their change log. So if you want to see some of the new updates, you can see them right here. But I recommend just clicking on the back to home button, which will bring you to the front page right here. Now, when you initially set it up, you have two options, easy mode and custom mode. Easy mode is basically just going to do everything for you. And so if you don't know anything about emulation, this is probably going to be the easiest route. However, we're going to go through the custom mode so I can show you the features that you can choose. First things first, it's going to ask you where do you want to actually save all of your game files. So what you want to do is click on the select your drive option right here. It'll give you a quick warning, you just press on OK, and then it'll give you a list 
listing of all the drive letters that you have associated with your computer. Right now I don't have anything plugged in, so it's just showing me my internal hard drive. But if you had a micro SD card inserted into your device or maybe a flash drive, those would show up here as well. Either way, for this example, I'm just going to pick my C drive and hit OK. And I have found that sometimes when you click this, it'll give you an error. And this happened on a couple different devices when I first set it up. All you have to do here is just click through the OK prompts and then just go ahead and try it again. So click your C drive or wherever drive you're using and then press OK. At some point, you should see the drive letter underneath the select your drive option here on the left. And once you see that, you should be good to go. So let's go ahead and press on next. And here you're going to see a bunch of options for various devices that you may want to use EmuDeck with. Now, this isn't comprehensive. And so if the device that you're not using right here isn't available, what you can do is click on one of the other bottom ones. So for example, if you're just running on a desktop PC like me, you could just use the Windows PC one. Or if you're using a Windows handheld that is not shown right now, you can use the Windows handheld one as well. Either way, I'm going to click on the Windows PC one and we'll move on from here. On the next window, it's going to ask you which emulators you want to install on your device. By default, it's basically going to install all of them. But if there are certain ones you know you're not going to use, then you can unselect them here. On the next page, it's going to ask you which configuration files you want to use. Again, by default, it's just going to use all of them. And honestly, these are really small file sizes, so I don't think it's a big deal. I'm just going to select all of them myself. On the next page, it's going to give you an option of whether or not you want to configure auto saves. What this means is when you close out of a game, it's going to automatically save that game. And then when you start a game back up, it's going to load right back where you were. Me personally, I like this feature, so I'm going to turn it on. On the next page, you can set up an integration with Retro Achievements. This is a pretty cool feature. You have to sign up for it on retroachievements.org first. And of course, it's free to sign up. And once you have an account, all you have to do is just add your username and password right here. Now, on the next few pages, we're going to have a bunch of different options. For example, if you want to have bezels on the left and right sides of your games, you can turn that on right here. Additionally, you can determine which kind of aspect ratio you prefer to use for each of your classic systems. So for most of these, I like to just choose the original 4x3 aspect ratio, but if you want to make them wider or maybe apply widescreen hacks, you can do that right here. Additionally, you can apply different LCD shaders. So if you want to give it a more classic or retro CRT look, you can totally do that here as well. Next up, you can also change the default theme for Emulation Station. This is the browser window that you can use to go through your entire ROM collection. Personally, I like the one called Modern. It reminds me of a Nintendo Switch, so we're going to pick this one here. And finally, we have a new feature here with EmuDeck for Windows. And on this page, what you can do is set the various resolutions for all of your emulated systems. And so this really is going to depend on how powerful of a computer you're going to be running this on. For example, if you're using one of the more modern Windows handhelds, then you could probably do something like 1080p. But if you want to push the resolution higher to maybe something all the way up to 4K, you're going to need a pretty beefy PC, basically something that has its own dedicated graphics card. Either way, I recommend going through here and just kind of determining what kind of resolution you prefer for each of your games. And really, that's about it when it comes to that initial configuration. So on the next page here, it's going to give you a summary of all the things that we're going to set up. And after that, you can press finish. And here it's going to go through the internet and install each of these individual emulators and then also apply specific configurations for each of them so that they work the best for you. Now, as this is going through, you are going to have to click OK on a couple different installations. So if you do get any sort of prompts, just go ahead and click yes and then let it go through the rest of the setup process. Either way, once it's done, you're going to be greeted by this page right here. And this here will explain how it's all going to fall out when it comes to Windows because there are various devices that are going to be working with this version of EmuDeck. And so, for example, if you're using the ROG Ally, you need to change the control mode to the gamepad mode in the command center. Additionally, another thing to bear in mind is these games are meant to be launched via Steam. And that's because the emulators are configured via Steam input. And so you need to launch the games via Steam to make sure that your hotkeys and other things are going to work properly. So, for example, you wouldn't want to launch these games via Armory Crate on the ROG Ally or via Aya Space on the Aya Neo. Anyway, that's just a quick explanation of how these controls are going to work. On the next page, it's going to give you an option to set up cloud saves. Now, this is an early access feature that's available both on the Steam Deck as well as on Windows. And we'll talk a little bit more about this at the end of the video because it's a pretty advanced topic. Either way, on the next page, it'll explain how it is actually going to work when it comes to playing your games. And you essentially have two options that I've kind of talked about a little bit in the intro. To start on the left side, we have the integration within the SteamOS interface. 
And I'll walk you through this process here in a minute, but let me show you a quick demonstration. So when we're using Steam ROM Manager, what that means is you'll integrate your games directly into the Steam interface. And I've always found that the best way to have this done is by choosing just a few select games that you really are going to play often. If we go into our library section, you'll actually see there's a non-Steam tab. And within here, you can see all of the different ROMs I've integrated into Steam using that Steam ROM Manager tool. And so, like I mentioned, this is going to be for your very favorite games, the ones that you want to see interspersed with the other Steam PC games that you probably already play. Now, the other way to play your ROMs is going to be through that app here on the right called Emulation Station. And this one's going to be a little bit different. Basically, any ROM that you add into your folders are going to appear automatically within Emulation Station. So, for example, if you've got hundreds of games that you want to actually have on the device, but you don't want to have them within Steam, if you just add them into the folder, they'll automatically show up within Emulation Station. So again, the way I like to think about it is my very favorite are within Steam, and then all the others are going to be within Emulation Station. And for me, this is a really handy setup, so that way I can have access to all my games, but they're not going to clutter up my main interface as well. Either way, we're going to go and set this up here in a minute, but first we need to actually add our games next. So we're going to click on skip for now here on the bottom right, and then you'll be greeted with the main Emudeck interface. We'll go through this here in a minute, but I just wanted to show you this real quick before we started adding our games. And now that we're ready to add our games, let's go ahead and minimize Emudeck so we can get back to our desktop. Now, if we go into whatever drive that we installed Emudeck onto, for me, it's going to be the C drive. If we open it up, you'll see a new folder here called Emulation. And within that folder, you're going to see a few different subfolders. And there's two in particular that we want to pay attention to, one called BIOS and one called ROMs. And within the ROMs folder, that's where we're going to put all of our games. If we open that up, you can see that there's just a bunch of different folders already pre-populated within here. And each of these folders corresponds to a system that you can emulate on Emudeck. And I know when you first look at it, it's going to be pretty intimidating, but let me kind of walk you through this whole process as we get started. For example, if we look at this one right here, it's called GC, and that actually stands for GameCube. And what you can do is you can open up that folder, and within it will be a text file. If you open up that text file, it's going to show you the full name of the system, but then also all the different file types that it accepts. So that's a really quick way of being able to know if you're adding the right games into the right folder. Now, a more comprehensive way of checking this out is going to be through the Emudeck wiki, and I'll leave it linked down below. The most important page here is going to be one that's called the Cheat Sheet. And if you look in the table of contents, you can see there's a bunch of different chapters. Let's go into the Nintendo section right here. Within each of these, you'll see a table, and this table will show you the name of the system, the ROM folder within Emudeck, and then also the default emulator is going to use, as well as the file types it accepts. And finally, if there are any BIOS files that it requires, it's going to show you a listing of them right here. So I recommend, if you're just getting started, to go over to this wiki page and check out these tables. If there's a specific system you're trying to emulate, all the data you need is going to be right here. But I'm also going to walk you through a few different scenarios just to show you how the setup works. So here's my folder setup. On the left, I have that Emudeck folder that was created earlier. And then on the right, I have my own ROM collection. And I have all of these on a flash drive, and I've just plugged that into my PC. And so that's why you're seeing all these folders here on the right. And so now what I want to do is move over some of those game files into my Emudeck folder. We're going to go back into that ROMs folder and see that big long list again. And I'm just going to pick a select few right here to add. And since we were already talking about GameCube, let's go into the GC folder first and add a couple games. Now I'm going to be super choosy right here because I don't want to move over a ton, but I just want to show you a few as an example. Once I've copied over some of those games, I'm ready to move on to the next system. And I think we're going to do PlayStation 2 to just keep it within the same generation. And same thing here, I'm going to go into the PS2 folder here on the left, and then on my flash drive on the right, I'm just going to pick a select few PlayStation 2 games and then move them over. And essentially, this is the entire process when it comes to moving your ROM files over into Emudeck. Now for my next example, let's say that you want to move over a bunch of games into one. For example, I'm a huge Nintendo Entertainment System fan, and so I want to move over my whole collection of NES games. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab all 50 of these games and then move them over onto the left into the NES folder. And I think this is a good stopping spot to show how it works when you transfer over your ROMs. Now the last thing we need to configure in addition to our ROMs are going to be our BIOS files. And BIOS files are basically system files that are required for certain emulators to work properly. And to get the best information, again, I recommend going back to that Emudeck wiki page, which I'll have linked down below. And it's going to be the same process here. You can go into the cheat sheet, and there on the far right column, you'll see a listing of all the BIOS files that will be required for certain systems. 
Now for the more advanced systems, you know, say something like Nintendo Switch, it does get quite complicated. And for those, the Emudeck wiki page is still going to be very helpful. If you scroll down here on the right side, you'll actually see there are individual pages for each of those more high-end emulators. So for example, if we go into the Yuzu page, you will find everything you need to know when it comes to setting up Nintendo Switch on the Emudex system. So it'll tell you specifically where to put your ROM files as well as which BIOS files are required and where they go. So once again, yes, definitely use that wiki page. There's a lot of great info on there. Now also within Emudex itself, there's a really handy tool to be able to check BIOS files for some of the more popular systems. And so if we go back into the Emudex front page, you can see on the right side here in the center, there is an option called BIOS Checker. And once you click on that, it's actually going to take you to this other page where it's going to scrub through your folders and see whether or not you have the correct BIOS files that it's looking for. Now, of course, we haven't moved over any BIOS files yet, and so you can see all of them are missing right now. And I should also mention that you can see right here, not every single system is listed because not every system needs BIOS, only a select few. But among all of those that we already added ROMs to, you can see that PlayStation 2 is one of those that does require BIOS. So let's go ahead and use PlayStation 2 as our example when we start to add some BIOS files. And so again, here is my folder setup. On the left side, I'm in the BIOS folder within Emudeck. And then on the right side, I'm in my flash drive in my BIOS folder that has my PS2 BIOS files. And so I'm going to grab one of my BIOS file sets right here. It's the 90001 set. And all you have to do here is just copy them over into that main BIOS folder within Emudeck. Now, if we go back into the main Emudeck page and we go back into that BIOS Checker app, you can see now when it re-scrubs everything in the folder, the PlayStation BIOS files are now detected. So when it comes to launching PS2 games, we should now be good to go. Either way, if you're just getting set up with BIOS files, this can be one of the more complicated things, and unfortunately I can't share any of these files because they're all copyrighted just like how ROM files are. But to help you along your way, here's a listing of all the BIOS files that I specifically use for my Emudeck build. And so if you'd like, you can pause the screen right here, and this is going to help you in your search to make sure you get all the right files. Either way, now that we've added our ROMs and BIOS files to our example systems, let's go ahead and integrate them now into Steam. And to do that, we're going to use the app right here on the center left called Steam ROM Manager. When you first open it up, it's going to show you this page called Parsers. And I'm going to maximize this to make sure it's a little bit easier to see. Now the way this works is that Steam ROM Manager is going to search any of these systems right here that you leave toggled on. And so the best way to think about this is you want to think about what games you want to see integrated into your entire Steam interface. And if there is a game on a certain system, then that's the one you want to toggle on. For everything else, you want to actually leave off. So what I usually do right here is I go to the very top and I toggle all of them off. From there, I only turn on the ones that I know I'm actually going to use. To start, I want to turn on Emulation Station because that's an app I want to see within Steam to be able to access all of my games no matter what. From there, I also like to toggle on the emulators option. That means that I can open up a specific emulator and configure it directly within Steam. And then after that, I'm just going to choose the systems that I know I want to see within Steam. And because we only added games for GameCube, NES, and PlayStation 2, those are the three I'm actually going to turn on. Anyway, once you've gone through and decided which systems you want to see within Steam, the next step is to click on the preview button, which you can see on the bottom. On the next page, you're going to get a button that says parse. We're going to click on that one next. And from there, it's going to search through all of the different folders that you toggled on and then find the game and also download all of the art for it. And this may take a while, depending on how large your library is altogether. Now, one thing to bear in mind, this is going to add every single game from each of those folders. So, for example, if you only wanted a few Nintendo games, all of them are still going to show up. And so the next thing we want to do now is remove some of those games that we actually don't want to see within Steam. There are some NES games I want to play, but definitely not all of them. To do that, we're going to use a tool that's on the bottom as well called Exclude. We're going to click on that button here, and from there you just want to go through the entire library and then click on any of the games that you don't actually want to see. After you click on them, they're going to darken a little bit, and that means that they won't show up in Steam after this. And so this is a great way to choose specifically which games you want to see within your Steam interface. Anyway, once you're done, on the top right there's an option to save. Just go ahead and click on that and all those games that you clicked on are going to disappear. And so for example here I've gone from 66 games down to 32. Now next you might want to change the box art in some of these games. This is actually pretty easy too. If you hover over a game you'll get these left and right arrows. If you click on the right arrow it's going to scroll through all your available options. So once you find one you're happy with, just go ahead and use that. Now some of these may actually be mismatched. For example, the Dolphin emulator right here is showing as an Atari 2600 game. So to fix this, we're going to click on the magnifying glass on the bottom left. And this will show all the things within the database that have the word Dolphin there. 
And sure enough, a few down, you can see there's the Dolphin emulator. So we're going to click on that one and select Save and Close. And so now we're seeing the proper Dolphin emulator right here. Here's another example. This is supposed to be Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles for the GameCube, but instead it's showing a different game called Echoes of Time. So again, let's go ahead and click on that magnifying glass. And sure enough, right here is Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. So again, we'll click on it and then select Save and Close. And now we've changed the game. And so really this is it when it comes to cleaning up your Steam ROM manager. You can change your different box art, but then also fix any sort of mismatches with any of these games. And also bear in mind, it's going to save your progress. So if you want to come back to Steam ROM Manager later and maybe change out some box art, you can do that as well. Either way, once you've got everything set up the way you want, what you want to do is click on the button on the bottom called Save to Steam. And depending on the size of your library, it might take a minute to actually go through it, but when it's done, you'll see an indicator here on the top right that will say Done Adding and Removing Entries. And once you're there, you're good to go. We can close out a Steam ROM manager and then also close out an Emudeck and we can start up Steam and now we can actually start playing our games. And so here we are in the Steam interface. Let's go ahead and go into the library section here on the left. And now if we go into that non-Steam tab, you can see the exact games that we were just messing around with in the Steam ROM manager. And so yeah, here we are. We can click on any of these games and press play and it should start right up. So at this point, I think you should pat yourself on the back because it was a little bit of work, but now we have all of your ROMs directly in the Steam interface on Windows. And to exit out of a game, it's going to depend on the emulator you're using, but for the most part, you just need to press select and start to close out of it. And after that, it should take you right back to the main Steam interface. Just to make sure, let's go ahead and test out the other systems that we added to our emu deck. So next up, let's try Final Fantasy X on the PlayStation 2. And yeah, sure enough, this one boots right up and it's at 1080p, which is the resolution that we set within the settings. Again, we're going to press select and start to exit out of it. We're going to go back to the main interface. And now let's try a GameCube game. Let's do Alien Hominid. And sure enough, yeah, this one works perfectly as well. So really, when it comes to integrating games into Steam, we're actually good to go. You can always go back into Steam ROM Manager and add more games or take some away. But essentially, that is the entire process right here. Now, the other piece of the puzzle is going to be Emulation Station. So all the games that we decided to not put within Steam ROM Manager, they're going to show up there. So let's go ahead and open up Emulation Station and and sure enough, here you can see we have our three systems that we added games to. And if we go into here, you can see it's the entire list, not just the ones that were within Steam ROM Manager or the ones that we missed, but all of them all at once. So this is going to be great if you just want to browse through your collection and then boot up a random game. And so let's go ahead and do that right now. Let's start up Castlevania and see if it works. And yeah, sure enough, here we are starting up this game. Same thing here, we can press select and start to exit out of the game and we're back into the menu. Now another thing you can do within Emulation Station is make the browsing interface a little bit prettier. To do this, we're going to use a function called scraping. To do that, we're going to press start to go into the scraper menu. And then under the scrape these systems, you just want to select whatever systems you want to scrape. We're going to do all of them all at once. Now within the account settings, it's going to ask you for a username and password from Screen Scraper. And if you don't have one of these already, you just need to go to this website right here. It's called Screen Scraper. .fr. And this one's also free to set up, but once you have a username and password, just add them into Emulation Station. After that, we're basically good to go, so we can select the Start button, and from there it's going to go out into the internet and then download the box art for each of the games that you have within the Emulation Station system. And this process can be kind of slow depending on the size of your library. For example, I have 57 games that I'm scraping, and I think altogether it probably took maybe 15-20 minutes for those games. Either way, using the magic of television, we're just going to go ahead and fast forward right here, and it'll tell you that all the games have been successfully scraped. After that, when we navigate through the menu, you can see when we go through the games list, we're getting a much nicer experience. It's going to show the box art and a little bit of description of the game. And if you hover over the game for a moment, it's actually going to play a little bit of a video preview too. So this is an easy way to make your emulation station experience a little nicer looking. Now, like I mentioned before, I like this modern theme here because it reminds me of the Nintendo Switch, but you also have the ability to change the theme as well. To do that, we're going to press start to go into the main menu, and then under UI settings, you'll see an option that is called the theme downloader. When you go into here, it's going to give you a listing of a bunch of different themes that you can download and install onto your device. Once you've downloaded one, you can go into the theme set section here and then change them out. For example, I've already installed this one here called Electful. And just like that, we have an entirely new theme interface. And the nice thing here is that all that box art that we scraped is going to apply to each of these themes as well. So with a little bit of work, you can make this a much nicer and prettier experience. 
Okay, we're getting pretty close to the end of the video here, but I want to show a couple tweaks you can do in what I'm calling Emudeck maintenance. And periodically, you're probably going to want to go into Emudeck and check out some of these options. For example, here on the top left, there's an option called Quick Settings. And within here, we can toggle on and off all those options that we first set up when we first installed Emudeck. For example, if you want to remove some bezels or change out an LCD shader, you can do all that stuff right here. Another handy tool is the next one over called Manage Emulators. And within this one, you can do all sorts of things. So for example, if we open up one of these emulators here, starting with RetroArch, here you can do things like reset the configuration. So for example, if you went into the settings and really messed things up, you can change that right back here. Additionally, you can reinstall the app if you're having issues or update it as well. Additionally, on the far right side, it's going to give you a listing of the hotkeys specific to that emulator. And the same thing can be done for any of the other emulators. So you can reinstall or update them or reset the configuration. And of course, you can also check out the hotkeys as well. Also within here, if you want to go back into Steam ROM Manager, if you want to add additional games to your Steam OS, you can do that right here. Or if you just want to start over from scratch, you can do a quick or a custom reset. Now, another thing to note here, if you're already familiar with Emudeck via the Steam Deck, you may see that there are some features that are not available here within Windows. And there's a couple things going on. Number one, this is still in test phase. So they're still bringing in new features, but also there are features that are going to be more specific to Linux. And so they won't show up here on Windows. And the same thing is probably going to happen as Windows gets more developed too, there will probably be features that make sense here, but it may not make sense to bring that feature over to the Steam Deck. So those are the kind of things that the Emudeck developers are thinking about as they build out these tools for multiple platforms. Either way, as we close out here, I want to show off two special features that are going to be coming to Emudeck for Windows. I think these are pretty cool. To start, we're going to check out the cloud saves option that I mentioned earlier in the video. And essentially what this is going to do is it's going to save your game files up into the cloud, but then also you can access those save games on other platforms. So for example, if you start a game on your Steam Deck, you can then finish it out on a Windows PC. C, or if you've got a handheld that runs Windows, you can do that there as well. Now, this is very much in early stages, but let me show you kind of how this whole setup is going to work. To start, we'll click on the sync button right here and then go to next. And then as you can see, we have a bunch of different cloud options available. I'm going to go with Google Drive for this example. Once I click on that, I'm going to select Setup Cloud Sync. It's going to bring up a new window here that's going to allow me to sign into my Google profile and then choose to associate it with the app that they're using for this backend. And this app is called Rclone. It's a pretty well-known cloud integrator. Either way, once you've given it all of its permissions, you can go ahead and close out of this window and get back into Emudeck. And here you'll see a little window that'll say that everything is configured. And basically when you start up a game, it's going to load a save state. And when you close out of the game, it's going to save it as well. And like I mentioned, this feature is still in testing. And so it's not quite perfect, but you can see that it is starting to come along. So for example, here, when we start up Super Mario Brothers 2, you can see that a command window is going to pop up. And I should note, you know, this process here is going to slow down your gaming experience because it has to go and download that file every time. Either way, after a moment, you will see that the game will pop up. And theoretically, if there is a save game in the cloud, it'll load that up. Now, like I mentioned, this feature is still in the works. And so because of that, it's not super reliable just yet. But all the same, I just wanted to show how that experience works. And the same thing is going to happen when you close out of a game. And like I mentioned before, it will cause a little bit of a delay in getting in and out of your game. And of course, if you have multiple systems running Emudeck, you'll be able to access those same game files through here. Another feature that's in the works is called Game Mode, and this one's pretty cool. Essentially, what'll happen here is that when you first start up your device, it's going to bypass the Windows desktop. Instead, as soon as you log into Windows, it's going to go directly into the Steam Big Picture interface. And as you can see here, as soon as I use my fingerprint to log into Windows, it went directly into Steam. From there, I can just navigate through like I always would to be able to launch my games and whatnot. But the thing is, the Windows desktop is still not loaded. To give an example, if we close out of Steam, you can see that after that, it'll actually start loading up the Windows desktop. Now, like with the cloud saves, this one is still in the works, and so they don't have this available as a public option just yet. Yet, but I think this is something that we will probably see as an available option here in the coming weeks. And I think it's going to be pretty handy if you want to really simplify your gaming experience on a Windows handheld. Anyway, that's really about it for this video here. I just wanted to show you how to get set up with Emudeck on Windows. And I think as the weeks progress, we're going to see a lot more development. And as more people test Emudeck for Windows, they're going to find even more bugs. And the more bugs that are found, the more easily they'll be fixed. So I fully expect to make more guides in the future once we have more additional features added to the platform. Either way, I think you can see here that this is a really great idea in the sense that you can set up all these emulators without having to configure them all individually. So let me know what you think in the comments below. 
are you already using Emidec for Windows, or is this something that you're considering? And be on the lookout for other emulation videos that I have in the works, things like Chimera OS, as well as Play Night and Retrobat. As always, thank you for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.